Oh, yes. All right. Perfect. So today we are going to discuss about a demonstration, an introduction class of Kafka system administration. Okay. So Kafka on Linux operating system. So the thing is entire Kafka we are going to discuss on Linux operating system only. Like whatever the operating system is, Kafka behaves the same. It doesn't change. So uh, in real time, you know, Kafka uh, 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 Kafka will be used on uh, Linux operating systems only. Like whatever the project you go across the world. 99.99% only Linux operating system will be used for Kafka. So no other operating system will be used because Linux is having its own benefits and Kafka best fit for Linux operating system. Let's start the demonstration now. So the thing is uh, challenges before Kafka. So let's start like that. So first of all, I, let me tell you one sample scenario like uh, before Kafka, what was the challenge and why Kafka came into picture. So let's see that. <clears throat> So the thing is, uh, we have a source system and there is a target system. Like there are two computer systems, there are two applications and they want to talk to each other. So they want to exchange the information. So they want to communicate with each other. So the thing is, <coughs> in the industry, right, two systems are going to talk to each other for happening some business. So they have to communicate to each other. So right now, we are talking to each other like i am a source system and you all are target systems i am talking to each other and why i need to talk to each other why i need to communicate to you because ultimately some business is going to happen in the back end right in the same way when two systems are talking to each other it means some business is going to happen at the back end so the thing is source system needs to transport some data so source system simply directly connects to target system and it can transport the data and it, it look like very simple right now see this diagram now i have four source systems and i have four target systems now each and every source system need to target need to talk to each and every target system now establishing a direct communication you see the diagram how complicated it is when there are just eight systems out of eight four are source systems and four are target systems the architecture becomes complicated but in the real time, if you take any project, there would be millions of systems. There would be millions of applications. Now to establish a communication between all, I mean, among all the applications, among all the application systems would be really highly, highly tough. And managing those systems are also becomes very, very complex, right? So the thing is when systems are getting increased, when applications are getting increased, establishing a communication among the systems, establishing a communication among the applications will become a highly, highly complicated stuff. So to make this complication simple, Kafka came into picture. Okay. Now let me explain you one simple scenario. What is the challenge in managing the communication among the applications? Simple. So for example, if you have four source systems and six target systems, now to establish a communication among these uh, four plus six ten systems we need to write down 24 integrations four into six uh, that is equal to 24 integrations and each and every integration uh, there would be a lot of difficulties we need to uh, overcome so that in terms of protocol in terms of data format and in terms of data schema and evaluation uh, each and every integration we have to overcome all these things and then you have to develop 24 integrations now designing 24 integrations taking uh, time while overcoming these protocols now designing the communication among the millions of applications just imagine it will take lifetime not even lifetime right it's highly highly complicated so to simplify this communication among the applications kafka came into picture now you see this diagram i have source systems and i have target systems so each and every source system has connected to each uh, has connected to uh, something called Kafka. Now all the source systems connected to Kafka, all the target systems connected to Kafka. Now Kafka is like a messaging router. It's a messaging backbone among your applications. For example, a source system wants to connect to like this is source one, this is source two. This is source three and this is four. Same way, target one, target two, target three, and then target four. So the thing is, let's assume source system two wants to connect to target system three. Now, 
let's assume we are using something called apache kafka as a messaging backbone as a messaging system now source system connects to apache kafka so in kafka we have something called topic topic is you know very very powerful word in uh, in kafka like uh, if any of you having a background of ibm mq in mq we are having something called queues local queues like that in kafka we are having something called topic so all the messages will be transported through this topic only between the applications in kafka so what is this topic in the technical introduction we are going to take a deep dive of the topic but right now just assume that there is something called topic which is a very very powerful word in kafka so let's assume we have something called topic one so source system will connect to kafka and put the message into this topic one and the target system three it will connect to the same Kafka and same topic and it will consume the messages. So ultimately, source system is talking to target system via Apache Kafka. Now, let's assume source system 4 wants to connect to target system 1. So the thing is, I will build one more something called another topic, say topic 2. Now, this source system 4 will connect to topic 2 in Kafka and target system also connects to topic 2 in Kafka and the messages will be transported from source system 4 to target system 1. So, like this, you can establish a communication among the applications, among the millions of applications with the help of Kafka. So, like Kafka is just like, just like a router. So, all your applications connect to this router. Now, Kafka takes the load. Kafka takes the load of your distribution. How to distribute your messages. Okay. So like in our home, we have a router, right? We have a Wi-Fi router. I can connect to my laptop. I can connect to my mobile. So uh, I can connect a number of systems, right? Now the load will be on the router like this. The load will be on the Kafka. So Kafka is, you know, I'd say a uh, highly powerful messaging backbone. It's really an emerging thing these days. What it will do is it can come, it can, the purpose of Kafka is only one thing. It will manage the communication among the millions of applications in a simple fashion, in a decoupling fashion. Decoupling fashion means, so decoupling fashion means the target system and the source system, they don't have a direct communication. They will be having an indirect communication via Kafka. So being a Kafka administration, our main role is we have to manage the instances kafka instances kafka clusters so in the entire training we are going to see how to build this kafka cluster how applications are going to communicate how messages will be produced everything we are going to see that hope you got some familiarity now why we need to use kafka what is the purpose of kafka right any questions in this slide guys <clears throat> yeah so this can be also achieved by the ibm mq right what is the difference uh -huh. that we found Yes, exactly. Good question. So the thing is, the purpose of IBM MQ, the purpose of Kafka, both are same. Both are messaging technologies only. But MQ is a product of IBM. Kafka is a product which is having open source and also uh, a licensed version of Kafka is also there. The thing is, IBM MQ is a one-on-one -on -one communication. Like first message comes, first message goes. Now second message comes, second message goes. Third message comes, third message goes. It's like one-on-one -on -one communication. But Apache Kafka, it's a streaming application. Like millions of messages can hit your topic one time and millions of messages can be consumed by millions of applications at the same time. So Apache Kafka is a completely multi-node cluster. But IBM MQ is one server. So the thing is, the throughput in Apache Kafka would be really, really high. The main purpose of Kafka is throughput. But the throughput is not that much high in IBM MQ. In IBM MQ, it's a one-on-one -on -one communication. But IBM MQ is having its own feature. For example, if you go to uh, banking system or financial messages, when you are handling, you know, uh, highly sensitive data, which is very, very uh, secure data, you need to transport them. Then, and you don't have any concern about the throughput, then yes, you can go to IBM MQ. You can purchase that product from IBM and you can use that. But Apache Kafka is completely different thing. Although it is a messaging communication tools, you know, uh, in big data world, Apache Kafka is the best one for the messaging application communication because it can handle it can handle streams, it can handle millions of messages per second. That's the difference between Kafka and IBM. Is that answer your question? That is, but uh, 
still i mean i think uh, we can also use the same concept in the mq perspective because we have like one to many connectivity also and many to many connectivity also is there in the mq as well right but kafka is one on one communication right uh, see uh, mm -hmm. the thing is once message has been delivered to applications in ibm mm -hmm. mq the message won't be there in mq it is vanished right it is gone but okay in kafka there is something called a retention time period like once a source system has a put a message in topic there is some retention period in kafka let's assume by default when a message comes to kafka it will be there for 7 days in kafka so within even after days, you know even after consuming the message from the target system also exactly that's right acha okay so so the thing is uh while uh, let's assume the target system has uh, so the source system has put the message in topic and now the topic will be retention for 7 days now within 7 days mil how many millions of time target system can consume that many millions of times kafka will give the message because kafka will store the message for 7 days and <clears throat> let's assume the target system has consumed it for the first time and let's assume the process has gone wrong although the process has gone wrong target system again will connect to the same topic same topic and it will again consume the messages within 7 days and it can process one more time but in mq you don't have such kind of functionality once it's consumed it won't be there in mq it is gone again you have to ask your source system hey boss please send me the messages again because my process gone wrong and i want to reprocess it again so you have to every time you have to ask with the source system but in kafka there is something called retention time period of 7 days which is a default one so within 7 days you can consume the messages for n number of million times and you can process it if if uh, it gone wrong understand yeah got it thank you all right okay so let's move on now let's see what is kafka so kafka is a powerful messaging system mainly to decouple the data streams on the systems like there would be no direct coupling fashion there is no direct communication uh, between uh, source system and target system So Kafka allows source system and target system to communicate in publish subscribe mechanism. So it means source system publishes the messages <clears throat> into Kafka and the target system who are waiting for that particular messages from that particular topic they can consume it. So the publisher publishes the messages. They are the producers and the subscribers they are called as consumers. They can consume the messages. So let's see what are the advantages we have with Kafka. So okay, so Kafka is the concept of Kafka. Initially, it is created by LinkedIn. So I hope you all are professionals. So Link, you must have heard of. Uh, I am damn sure you know what is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, the people, some people who worked in LinkedIn, they have created this uh, Kafka concept. But now it's now a open source project. So right now, the major vendor of Kafka is Confluent. Like for MQ. how ibm is the vendor like for kafka the major vendor is confluent so in this training also we are going to learn confluent kafka only because that's now booming so uh, you might be having some question like uh, we are saying apache kafka but now i am saying confluent what is mean by apache kafka what is mean by confluent kafka is there any difference the answer is simple guys there is no difference between apache kafka and confluent kafka both are same let's assume Uh, you have worked on Apache Kafka for five years. Later on, you have moved to a project where Confluent Kafka is there. And don't say that I don't know Confluent Kafka because Apache Kafka, Confluent Kafka, both are same guys. Confluent Kafka completely inherited the code from Apache, and they have added their own features. That's it. We, uh, when you have worked on Confluent Kafka, you can definitely work on Apache Kafka. When you have worked on Apache Kafka, you can definitely work on Confluent Kafka because both are same. Literally, no difference. But on the top of uh, kafka code apache will be having its own features content will be having its own features that's the only difference nothing else okay so yeah so in confluent also we have open source uh, community kafka community and we have enterprise kafka system so whatever the you use you can use it you can you can download the code from confluent website and you can deploy it in your real time project and you can use it for your live applications absolutely no issues So right now I'm working for a project where we are completely using uh, open source content Kafka only. Completely content community we are using. We are pay we are not paying even a single penny to content for using that because it's open source we are using. 
but the drawback is there would be no support from compliant whatever how whatever the big issue you face everything you have to fix it on your own that's it so <clears throat> kafka is a distributed resilient and fault tolerance architecture so let's see what is meant by distributed what is meant by resilient and what is meant by fault tolerance so let's talk about distributed so data is distributed in more than one system so for example kafka is always a cluster it could be a single node kafka cluster or it could be a multi node kafka cluster so let's assume uh, there is a multi node kafka cluster and when a message has been published into kafka it is not stored in it is not stored in one system it will be distributed among the systems like uh, uh, for example i have 10 nodes in my kafka cluster when a message is being published into a topic then the topic will be distributed into the 10 systems like so whenever topic is distributed in 10 systems so the message is also distributed in 10 systems the advantage is this is out of 10 system all the three systems are down still seven systems are there to serve your application so the end users they don't feel any downtime so that's the advantage of kafka but in ibm in queue when a message is there in queue it will be there in that particular queue manager if that queue manager server is down that's all you can't access that uh, queue because mk is a one-on-one -on -one communication but kafka is a fully distributed although in cluster two or three systems are down that's fine still another systems are there to serve your messages to serve your application now let's come to resilience feature so kafka having some amazing beautiful concept that is called resilient which means capability of recovering in a quick manner from unexpected failures which means if some unexpected failure is there right you know in 90 percent of the cases kafka will recover it automatically that's the advantage of the kafka because always kafka is a cluster right so what is meant by cluster if something is down another thing will be there to to serve your application to to make that business work so that's what the resilience is now fault tolerance fault tolerance means simple we are discussing about that if one system is down another system is still available to serve the application that's called fault tolerance so the difference between mq and kafka is this thing guys so uh, there is no fault tolerance in mq but there is a fault tolerance by default fault tolerance will be there in kafka in mq if you want to if you want to achieve a fault tolerance concept you have to go with the multi instance concept some additional things are there where you need to have very in depth uh, technical detail into mq but kafka by default this fault tolerance architecture will be there because kafka is itself a full fledged cluster so it's a horizontally scalable which means initially you can build your cluster with one node and you can keep on increasing whenever business increases for example today i have kafka cluster with one node so next week i can increase i can scale it to three nodes next week i can scale it to 10 nodes next week i can scale it to thousand nodes there is no limit guys kafka cluster is completely uh, scalable so you can scale up to hundreds of brokers broker in the sense it's like a kafka server only kafka server we can call as a broker in kafka so you uh, uh, it can scale millions of messages per second so this is the another advantage of kafka so the thing is uh, okay uh, i was reading an article a few days back and you know there is a company called uber i know uh, you guys uh, i mean i'm damn sure you know what is meant by uber it's a app based cab service uber they completely use kafka only and out in 24 hours of time uber process 7 trillion of messages per second sorry per day in 24 hours so 7 trillion 24 hours means it's really huge so there is no limit in kafka you can scale millions and trillions of messages per second so it's a high performance uh, the thing is i already told you right in one second you can process uh, millions of messages so really the performance would be really huge in kafka so the purpose of kafka is to process really tremendous volumes of data that's it so right now kafka is used by 2000 plus firms like around 35 percent of fortune 500 companies they are using kafka so out of them like abnb netflix linkedin uber walmart all these companies are now using kafka so clear with the advantages guys any questions uh, so mohan compliant kafka is also a open source Yes, Compliant Kafka open source is there and enterprise version is also there. Okay, so which version of uh, Kafka are we going to discuss? 
we are going to use Confluent Kafka 6.2, which is the latest version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I will show you. Like once these PPTs are done, I will open Confluent website and I will show you what are the available versions are there for Kafka. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let's see what are the real time use cases of Kafka. <clears throat> So Kafka is a powerful messaging system that we have already known by this slide. Now it is used for activity tracking. Uh, I will tell you. So the thing is Kafka is, you know, a very excellent tool for activity tracking. So, okay. For example, I have opened a website called Flipkart and I try, I try to purchase a mobile. I have searched for so many mobiles. I searched for iPhone, I searched for Android phone, OnePlus, Samsung, I searched for any phone but i have not purchased it so i have closed the browser i have shut down my system and next day again i open my laptop again i just open flipkart.com website you know as soon as i open flipkart.com website on the left hand side on the right side or top or below some flash will come hey this mobile is having this offer this mobile is having this offer so flipkart is having that ability i'm i don't know if you have noticed that functionality or not but the thing is how does, how Flipkart came to know you are looking for a mobile for the second time? When you open the laptop for the day two, it is showing the advertisements. Okay, this company is providing this offer, this mobile is having this offer. Why they are showing that? Because the previous day activity, what you have done, they have tracked it. So they might be under the assumption, okay, you might be interested in purchasing a mobile. Okay, if they filter some uh, offers good for you, they can show you, maybe you can purchase that mobile, maybe business to happen to Flipkart. Right, that might be the reason. So they can track your data and they can uh, they can automate something and they can show you. Okay, this is having some offer for you. So if you really love the offer, if you really like the offer, you can you can purchase it. So that business will happen to that particular Flipkart company. Right. So like that, activity tracking can be done for the applications and gather metrics for from different different locations. Ah, uh, let's assume I have Android mobile. Android is now managed by Google, right? So let's assume I have visited some, some mall today and next day morning when I woke up, right, uh, uh, my Android phone showed me, hey Mohan, yesterday you have visited uh, this place, please provide your feedback, like uh, uh, how to access this, uh, is this facility is there, what is the car parking facility, they will ask some feedback from us, right? Now how does that phone, that application know that I have visited this location? Because they have, they have something called uh, metrics location gathering with the help of a location gathering they can imagine okay he visited this place fine take him feedback so that they can put it on a public website so that other people other people they can review it they can see that for them it will be easy so for such kind of things kafka can be used and application logs gathering ah uh, so gathering application logs is you know one of the toughest jobs so for example uh, application will be deployed in the linux server i mean in some unix flavor systems right so whenever any application is there, definitely logs will be recorded, right? But the thing is, being a developer, being an end user, if you want to see the logs of a particular application, the thing is you have to log into the Linux server, you have to open the file, you have to search. It means some technical knowledge you need to have, which is not needed for the end users, right? So the thing is, when Kafka have the logs gathering functionality and put it in some nice graphical user friendly format, it's, it would be very easy for the uh, developers, right? So the thing is, uh, we have something called ELK. I don't know how many people have heard about ELK, Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is something, uh, it will gather the information and put it in some nice UI, some user friendly uh, dashboard so that, you know, uh, people can see that, okay, this is my log. So they can easily search for it. So for this kind of logs gathering also, Kafka will be used. And it's a stream processing. I already told you, Kafka is for managing millions of messages per second, which means it's a stream, messages stream, stream of messages. So the thing is to manage the Kafka stream processing, we, th there should be a lot of APIs we need to develop. But the thing is, this API development will be taken care by Kafka developers, but we are Kafka admins. Being a Kafka admin, uh, we, are, we are not going to learn how to develop this stream processing and all because I myself don't know how to build this Kafka stream. Because Kafka stream, you, uh, to build a Kafka stream application, you need to have a lot of, a lot of knowledge in the coding part. So from the coding part, I have very, very minimal knowledge. 
So stream processing, we're not going to discuss, but with the help of stream processing, once you have a Kafka stream API built, then you can manage the streams. So decoupling of system dependencies, like there is no direct dependency between source and target system. It's completely decoupling fashion. So it can integrate with the big data technologies like Spark, Flink, Storm, Hadoop, and many other big data technologies. It will perfectly fit because Kafka is to manage really huge data. So huge data means it comes under big data world. So for big data to serve the messages, to serve the data to big data, Kafka is one of the best tools. So clear with the use cases, guys. Any questions here? All right, let's move on. Now let's come to history and versions of Kafka. So Kafka is developed on Java and Scala languages. So even we, when we want to install Kafka in any system, right? Uh, first of all, we need to have Java installed on that mission. Without Java, Kafka will not work because Kafka itself developed on Java and Scala languages. So Kafka is officially launched in Jan 2011. And there are various versions of Kafka. So like Kafka 0.x, Kafka 1.x, Kafka 2.x. Right now, uh, the most stable release of Kafka is uh, 2.8. So now I think 2.8.1 has been launched on 19th April 2021. So for example, uh, I write uh, Kafka downloads. There is something called the Kafka.apache.org. So if I open this website, wow, 3.0 is released, guys. I'm not aware of this. See, I just opened in front of you. Now, uh, Apache Kafka 3.0 has been released. It's released on, okay, just three days back, 21st September 2021, uh, Apache has released a new version of Kafka, Kafka which is 3.0. Previously, see, 2.8.1 was the latest release. So it released on 17th September 2021. Now 3.0 is also came into picture. Okay, fine, <laughs> good. So now the latest version of Apache Kafka is 3.0. So I think I need to update my slide. So now the latest version is 3.0. All right. Now the thing is, but here these are Apache Kafka versions. But in this training, we are going to discuss on Confluent Kafka versions. So Confluent Kafka 6.2 we are going to use, and Confluent Kafka 6.2 is going to use Apache Kafka 2.10 only. So Confluent has downloaded this Apache Kafka 2.8 code, and they have this, they have added their own features, and they made it as Confluent 6.2. So that's all. So if I open, I will open a Confluent website now. So Confluent Kafka. Now this is Confluent website guys, docs.confluent.io. This is the official website of Confluent. Now if I click on the versions here, you see, Confluent is having many versions like Confluent platform 5.3, 5.4, uh, like then 5.5. Then if I scroll up now, 6.2 is the latest version. So right now 6.2.1 is also came. So uh, the, uh, we are going to discuss about 6.2.0 guys. So this is 6.2.0 will be using Apache Kafka 2.8 only. So and these are the installation instructions that we'll discuss in when we start the practicality. But if you want to see uh, what are the features of Confluent 6.2, you can open the release notes of Confluent 6.2. Just type something like this in Google and a website called Confluent Platform 6.2.0 releases. If you open this, see 6.2.1 is the major release of Confluent Platform that provides you Apache Kafka 2.80. You see this line, guys? So Confluent Kafka developed on, developed from which code? Apache Kafka 2.8 only. So which is this one. So Apache Kafka, Confluent Kafka, both are same, guys. Confluent inherited the code from Apache Kafka website and they have added their own features. That's it. So if you want to listen the complete features of 6.1, there is an official website, there is an official video on YouTube from Confluent. You can see that. So these are the versions of Kafka. Now, let's talk about roles of a Kafka admin. What does a Kafka admin has to do? So number one, Kafka installations, upgradations, and configurations. Then topics creation, modification, and configuration, and deletion. 
Kafka broker restart. Broker in the sense Kafka server itself called as a Kafka broker. So sometimes we may need to restart them. Like sometimes we may in MQ we restart the queue managers, right? Like that we need to restart Kafka brokers. Now zookeeper restart. What is this zookeeper? Yes, we'll discuss in the technical introduction. But the simple thing is without zookeeper, Kafka will never work. So setting authorizations, like when we enable security, so we need to set the authorizations for the Kafka clients, like, uh, which people can connect to my Kafka. So we can enable, we can we can control that using something called authorizations. So in the Kafka SSL security concept, we are going to discuss this authorization concept as well. So verifying the logs, such as Kafka logs and Zookeeper logs, and managing the logs is, I mean, uh, seeing the logs is very, very important thing being an administrator role, right? So we need to verify Kafka logs and Zookeeper logs for the changes and verifying the topics configurations. So our main job out of nine hours of uh, our uh, our uh, uh, day job, around three hours to four hours, we are going to work on configurations only. Like we will be having millions of topics in a Kafka cluster and each and every application people they say, hey, put this kind of configuration, put, uh, change this kind of configuration. So we are going to get such kind of uh, so many requests. So we are going to manage them. Uh, with the help of topics configurations this is another important role. uh yeah so these would be the main roles of a kafka when the course content and i will show you what is the there should be some prerequisite you should be aware number one good knowledge on linux operating system because after we are going to uh, learn on linux operating system so if you already have some familiarity with the linux operating system like uh, how to use the base commands like file systems I you know listing the things, opening a file, closing a file, you no, know, that would be very easy. And basic knowledge on how messaging product works. Like if you if if any people from uh, MQ background, Kafka would be very easy for them to understand. <clears throat> now let's talk about the modules. So we have total uh, 10 modules. Out of 10 modules, the first module is going to be introduction, which we have just completed. Now the second module is going to be the technical components theoretical explanation like what is meant by a broker in Kafka, what is meant by a zookeeper, topics, partition, replication factor and producer and then consumer. So we are going to discuss uh, theoretically with the diagrams. Then we are going to start with the uh, real time Kafka from here. So Kafka single node installation. For example, if you want to build a Kafka cluster in development environment, what do you do? So that's what the module is. We will take one server. We are going to set up a Kafka. So we'll start with the Zookeeper configuration. Then we'll start with the Kafka configuration. And then we are going to spin up our Kafka cluster. So that is what module three is. Now uh, we are going to start with the Kafka administrative stuff, Kafka command line interface, like how to create topic, what is the replication factor need, how to set a partition for a topic then how to work with the producer like how developers will connect to kafka so they have to use a producer programs how that will be used and what is meant by consumer program and what is meant by consumer group which is you know main important concepts so that's what we are going to discuss now advanced topic configurations like that uh, we have discussed in the previous slide right the roles of a kafka admin so the configurations managing configurations is really really tough job guys because kafka is having you know uh, really hundreds of configurations and we are going to discuss the main needed important configurations. So, which is like uh, how to change a topic configuration, what is meant by retention time. We have discussed about the retention time seven days, which is a default in Kafka, right? So, how to increase that, how to decrease that, and message bytes, and then cleanup policies, how uh, messages will be cleaned up in Kafka. So, after seven days, after once retention time is done, uh, so there would be policies coming to the picture it should be delete policy or it should be combat policy what is meant by delete how compassion will be happening in kafka topics that's what we're going to discuss now kafka multi-node cluster setup the thing is if you want to spin up a kafka cluster in the production environment how do you do that so that's what kafka multi-node cluster setup which contains two parts zookeeper quorum setup and then broker cluster setup and this is really really an art guys this is the complication but uh, I uh, I already made it very, very simple for you. So I already made a documentation for it. I will share that. You just have to follow that instruction. That's it. Now, client server architecture in Kafka. How does a client will connect to Kafka? So what are the things you have to do from Kafka broker side? And what does a application developer who wants to connect to Kafka, what that person has to do in order to connect to Kafka? So that thing we are going to discuss. 
Now Kafka performance. So what are the performance? What are the factors that impact the Kafka performance in terms of uh, disk, in terms of network, in terms of RAM, in terms of CPU, in terms of operating system? Uh, so we are going to discuss them. Now Kafka GUI tools. Like for example, in MQ we have a GUI tool, IBM MQ Explorer, right? Where you can manage, you can remotely manage all your uh, queue managers, queues, you can connect them, everything you can manage, right? Same way, Kafka is also having open source GA tools and also enterprise GA tools. So we are going to see them. So one is called Offset Explorer, which is, you know, a very, very famous thing to manage, to connect to Kafka clusters, to manage Kafka topics, and uh, uh, which is very useful. And then the conductor. Now, conductor is an enterprise licensed version, especially for on-chain, right? Conductor is, you know, very, very amazing tool. Right now, in our real-time projects, we are using conductor only. Okay, we are paying the money to conductor company and we are using that tool because conductor makes your life very simple. Uh, with the minimal Kafka knowledge, you can manage your conductor, you can manage your Kafka administration. Now, the important thing is Kafka security. This is highly, highly, highly complicated thing, guys. Because what is Kafka? Managing millions of applications. Now, providing a security is really, really important because without security, you can't handle sensitive data, especially in the real time. So, so, for example, right now I am working for an insurance company. So, we are managing customers' sensitive data like uh, uh, their, their insurance ID, their policies, and how much amount, what is their address proof, where they are living. It's really sensitive data, very personal to the customer side. And it is our responsibility that we must protect the data. If we do not protect the data, if some, if, if some uh, invader, if some hijacker hijacked my data, now my data is managed by hijacker, not by me. Now, if my, my hijacker directly go to client, hey boss, now I am managing your data. Your, your company is not managing your data, I am managing data. Now, just imagine, just imagine, aha, the reputation goes down, right? That's directly impact the business of our company. So, providing a security, how clients will connect to Kafka, how they will fetch the data, what are the security protocols we have, everything we are going to discuss. So, which will be contain three parts. Number one, encryption, to encrypt the in-flight data. Number two, authentication to authenticate the client. Number three, authorization to provide uh, a, a role-based access control for clients. Like this particular client has to connect to this particular topic only. So that we are going to that we are going to manage that we are going to discuss in ACLs authorizations. So here we are going to completely discuss on SSL, SSL encryption, SSL authentication, and SSL authorization. So these are the modules what we are going to discuss now okay uh clear with the syllabus guys any any questions you are having on the course content uh can kafka cluster be kerberized sorry can kafka cluster be kerberized yes why not yes, it sir. can be kerberized so kerberos kerberos is uh, it comes under authentication like you know uh, which client is connecting to Kafka. So uh, when you enable Kerberos authentication in our uh, Kafka, there will be token will be generated and the token will be having client details that will give the information to Kafka. Hey Kafka, this person wants to connect. Now Kafka decides, okay, connect. Mm -hmm. Or else Kafka can deny. I mean, there are again certain conditions on Kafka. Based on the, the certain conditions, Kafka decides whether this Kerberos authentication request, this Kerberos ticket will be authenticated or not. So that's again a complicated thing in the in the in the uh, security. But here we are going to discuss about the SSL authentication. We are not going to discuss about the Kerberos authentication. Okay. But Kerberos can be definitely implemented on uh, Kafka. Okay. But Kerberos can be definitely implemented on uh, Kafka. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So any more questions, guys, from the uh, course content? All right, now I will show you one more thing. Now the question is, okay, why should I learn Kafka? What is the, what is the pay I'm going to get when I learn Kafka and when I, when I see, when I go to real time, uh, I mean, when I'm attending any interview, how much pay I can ask? So I will show you one simple thing, guys. There is a website called payscale.com, which is an official website. And you can search average salaries for each and every technology across the globe. If I open this website, payscale.com, so in the payscale.com, okay, there is something called, 
Okay, first of all, let me log in, guys. Otherwise, oh, I have already logged in. That's fine. I have already logged in. Fine. So there is something called for you. In for you, there is something called salary search. In salary search, you can search your salary based on buy skill. So click that. And now here, type your skill. For example, I am typing Kafka search salaries. Now it will fetch you the results. So right now, okay. Right now it is getting me the uh, details of United States country, but let's select our country, India, salary search. Now type the technology, Kafka search. Okay, there is something called Apache Kafka. Fine, select the Apache Kafka. Now see, for, for uh, in India, skill Apache Kafka, the average salary is going to be 1 million per hour. Sorry, 1 million per year. 1 million means 10 lakhs per year. It's an average base salary. If you just scroll down, uh, it they will give you, uh, based on designation, they will provide you the salary. These are average salaries, guys. So if you are having a senior software designation and you are working on Apache Kafka skill, so then your average salary is going to be 15 lakhs, 54,000 per annum. And for a software engineer, it would be 10 lakhs 76,000. And for a data engineer, 10 lakhs rupees. And for software developer, 7 lakhs. For senior software engineer or programmer, it will be again 17 lakhs. For a lead software engineer, it will be 19 lakhs. And if I go to page number two, there would be technical architect, which is really, really high role. So 22 lakhs per, uh, per annum. So software development engineer. So this is the official website guys so based on that you can search for average salary and you can demand that and again i am not saying this would be a perfect salary it's an average salary like some companies will go will give you less salary some companies will give you higher salary which is mentioned here so it depends on again company to company their budget everything will come into picture but this will give you some overview okay this is what i can go now let's talk about mq okay i been mq series in India, okay, in India, see, 97, uh, 97,000, okay, 972,000 per annum. Uh, so, for Kafka, it was showing 1 million per year, which is 10 lakhs, but IBM MQ, it is now showing uh, 9 lakhs 70,000. And if you come down, <coughs> if you are having uh, a technical architect on IBM MQ, you can get 19 lakhs per annum with IBM MQ technology. So, that's what it is showing. So like this, you can search for any technology, guys. This is official website. And this is across the globe. So this will definitely give you some good glory. Okay, if I want to switch the job, I have this much experience and this is my skill. Okay, I can go here. Fine, let's demand like this. Let, let's ask like this. So that's all it is. Fine. So that's all, guys. I'm done with the demo. Now, have you guys, do you guys have any questions? anything thank you thank sure. you thank you guys have a good day thank you yeah. very much thank, thank you, you.